Good morning to all of my lovely year fives. I hope you are all well. We're going to move on with our second lesson for our maths unit this term, and we're going to be looking at multiplying three digits by one digit. So I hope you got on well yesterday. We're going to have a quick recap and warm your brains up before we start our lesson. So I'd like you to have a go at doing questions one to four and see if you can have a think of how you might answer the fourth question, having worked out the answers to question one, two or three. So pause the video and have a go. Okay, well, we know that two times two is four. Okay, if anyone got that wrong, Miss Humphrey is shaking her head at you right now. Number two, 40 times two. Well, we know from our small method, two times four is eight. Multiply it by 10, gives us 18. Same method applies to number three, the smile method. Two times three is six. Add the two zeros is 600. Now, I wonder if anybody noticed a pattern that's going to help you answer this question. So if you notice here, we had our two, we had our 40, and we had our 300. Now, if you look at 342, all we've done is we've partitioned that number into our ones, tens, and hundreds. So what we need to do now is actually add the answers together, and that's going to give us 684. So well done if you noticed that. So today we're going to be using the same concepts that we looked at for our lesson yesterday, but we're going to be applying this to using and multiplying three digit numbers. So we're going to start off with our place value counters again. So the first sum we're going to be looking at here is we have the answer 243. So here we have 243 represented in our place value grid. But as you can see, we have it four times. One, two, three, four. So our sum is going to be 243 multiplied by four. So the first thing we need to do is, can we exchange? So if we have a look at our ones, we definitely have too many ones in our column, so we can exchange those for one of our tens, okay? We know there's no more exchanges we can do in the ones because we only have two, so let's move on to the tens. What can I do in the exchanging in my tens? Well, if we have a look very closely, we have more than enough tens. So here we can take these ten tens, we know that we can exchange this for 100. So let's move the 100 over. Now looking at both of those columns, there's no more to exchange from the ones or the tens, but are there any to exchange in the hundreds? Well, no, because we have nine. So now we can have a go at working out the answers. So what we need to do is count up our hundreds, our tens, and our ones. So we have two ones, we have seven tens, and we have nine hundreds. So our answer is 972. Here we have the same sum, another sum, not the same sum, a different sum, of three times 150. Okay, and we're going to set this up using our place value counters again. So here we have 100, we have five tens, and we have no ones. Okay, we have a zero value for our ones. We have it three times, so we need three lots of this. Pause the video. Can you work out the answer to the question? Okay, so you might notice you might have to exchange some of our tens. So if we have ten lots of tens and exchange it for 100, now we can work out our answer as being 450. So well done if you got that correct. What I'd like to do now is have a go at doing questions one to two on your worksheet, please. So here we have the sum 103 multiplied by 4. So now we're going to move on to looking at our written method. Okay, now to help us with our written method from what we looked at yesterday, we can use our ones counter to help us as well, but also we're going to look at partitioning our number because we know that when we did each one of our steps yesterday, we looked at the different sections from the number we partitioned. So here we have our place value counters and this sets up 100 and three ones. Now there's no tens in here, so we need to remember this. If we partition it here into our ones, our tens and hundreds, again, we have three ones, zero tens, and we have 100 hundreds. Okay, so now that we've got this, we can work out our question. So the first thing we're going to do is three multiplied by four. Okay, now we have far too many ones in here, so we need to exchange these over and give them into our tens column. Okay, so the answer here is 12. So we should have two ones in our ones column and one additional 10 that we've had to move over to our tens column. Now we look at our second sum. Okay. So our second sum here is going to be zero multiplied by four. Now we know from our arithmetic practice that anything multiplied by zero is going to give us zero. So I could write zero as my answer. However, we had to carry one of our tens over from our previous question. So we need to remember to add that 10 on, okay? So adding that one on there, we have our ones tens. Now we move on to our hundreds, 100 times four. We should know that 100 times four is 400, okay? Now we don't need to carry any of the zeros, so we simply just add the four value to our hundreds column. And our answer is 412. Pause the video and have a think. How would we work out this question? 
Okay, so using our written method, remember we always start with the biggest number on top. Now because we're multiplying, the order wouldn't make any difference, but here it's easier to put the biggest number on top, and then we have our smaller one value that goes in our ones column, not forgetting that I have my units on top of my ones, tens, and my hundreds. So here we know that 6 times 4 is 24, so I know I have four ones and two tens, so I have to put my four ones in my ones column, and I have to carry those two lots of tens. Our next one is going to be four multiplied by four, this is 40 multiplied by four. So I know that four times four is 16, therefore 40 times four is 160. However, I cannot forget the extra 20 on the bottom, so 160 add the 20 is going to give us 180. Now because there's no ones to carry over, I carry my eights into my tens, I have to carry that hundred all the way across into my hundreds column. Now I'm going to be looking at 200 multiplied by 4. Well, I know that 2 times 4 is 8, therefore multiplied by 100 must give me 800. However, I need to remember to add the additional 100 we carried over before. My answer gives me 900. So altogether, 246 multiplied by 4 is 984. So let's have a look at this question, 7 multiplied by 153, so again we have our bigger number on top and we have our 1 value underneath in our 1's column. So let's look at this by partitioning it, so we have our 3, 50 and 100 if we partition this into our 3 separate numbers. So our first sum is going to be 3 multiplied by 7, the answer is 21. So I'm going to write my 1's value in my 1's column, but I need to remember to carry my 2, my 2 lots of 10's, into my 10's column. My next sum is going to be 50 times 7. Now I know this because I know my 5 times tables, or I know my 7 times tables. So I know that 7 times 5 is 35, therefore multiplied by 10 is going to give me 350. However, I need to remember to add those additional two tens on. So 350 add 20, okay, could be written the same as saying 35 tens, but added with the additional two tens is going to give me 37 tens. Okay, so here I have seven lots of my tens and I'm having to have to carry my 30 lots of tens over and carry them into my hundreds. So I know that 30 lots of tens is 300. Now all I need to do is 100 multiplied by seven. Well, we know that 100 multiplied by seven is 700. Adding my extra three lots of hundred that I have would give me a thousand. Okay, so here I have to add my additional column on because I'm now about to move into my thousands. I know that I am adding the thousand on there, but there are no additional hundred to be adding. Okay, so the answer there is 1071. Pause the video. I'd like to have a go at doing questions three to five on the worksheet. So it's always really important to make sure that we go back and we check our work before moving on to the next step when we're working out a calculation sum. Now, this question, for example, 147 multiplied by 6. Well, I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I'd have to work that out using my written method. However, what I do know is that the answer will have two ones. I also know this one. I do not know the answer to 383 multiplied by 2 off the top of my head instantly, but I know the answer is going to have six ones. Now, how do I know that this one's going to have six ones? So let's take this one for example. I know when I do my math sum, I start multiplying by my ones. So I have three ones and I multiply it by two. So I know that the ones value is going to have the answer six in it. Same rule applies here. I know that I'm going to be multiplying six by seven and I know that the answer is going to give me 42. Now I know that the ones is going to have a two in it because the ones value of 42 is two. Okay, so by working that out in my head just by looking at the ones, I already know what part of the answer should look like. So, based on that knowledge, pause the video. Can you complete the number sentences below? Okay, so the answer here, 3 multiplied by 5 is going to be 15. We know that the ones value within 15 is going to be 5, therefore it's going to have 5 ones. Here we are multiplying 7 by 3. Now I know that 7 multiplied by 3 is 21. Therefore the 1 value of 21 is going to be 1. So let's explore this question here. So this question says that 247 multiplied by 4 is 1,088. Now, I already know automatically that that answer is incorrect. And you might be wondering, well, how do I already know that? Well, I know that if I multiply... 47 by 4, if I was to add an additional 3 lots of 4, so to add an additional 12, and I was to do 250 multiplied by 4, I know that that answer already is 1,000. 
Now I have made the original sum bigger. However, if you notice my answers, this bigger number multiplied by four gives me a thousand. So if I was to take that additional three off, that tells me that the answer for the original question here must be less than a thousand. And here, the answer is clearly more than a thousand, despite the fact that this sum here is bigger. Okay, so it's always important to use your number facts that you already know to be able to estimate and guess whether an answer looks correct or incorrect. So what I would like to do now is I'd like to have a go at doing the rest of the questions on the worksheet. Once you've done that, have a go at doing the other questions that I have sent home to you. And if you feel like you need an additional challenge, please have a go at completing the extension questions. This week, I'll also be asking you to make sure that you access your TT Rockstars. Now, I have been able to log in so I can see whether you've been on or not. I will also uh, change the times tables focus for this term, so that should be ready for you to go today as well. At some point later on in the week, Mr. Spring or myself will be announcing a battle. Because year five, year six are still the champions, and this is not okay. We are better than year six. So I want you to make sure you get on, have a go at at least doing five or ten minutes of TT Rockstars practice, because that's really going to help you with this unit that we're going to be looking at over the next two weeks. Okay, good luck.